This is At the Public Library, the video source for news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. This month's show features library events honoring Asian Pacific Heritage Month, the new multilingual internet and public access catalog trainings, and a look back at the new main library's first year, as well as listings for children, teens, and adults at the Public Library. How to Find What You Want at the San Francisco Public Library is a free orientation and training program that introduces patrons to the library's online public access catalog computer system. The demonstrations given by staff librarians of the Main Library's Information Services Department present the basic steps in searching for books, magazines, and other materials by author, title, or subject. The librarians also introduce and demonstrate how to use the various databases that are available through the library's online catalog. The programs take place at the Main Library in the Corette Auditorium. This month, the How to Find What You Want at the San Francisco Public Library programs will be held every Tuesday afternoon at 4.30. The Main Library International Center is now presenting the How to Find What You Want at the San Francisco Public Library orientation and demonstration in Spanish, Mandarin, and Japanese. The Spanish orientation will take place on Saturday, May 24th, 11 a.m. in the Corad Auditorium. The Mandarin program will be given in the sixth floor training room in the main library on Friday, June 6th from 2 to 4 p.m. And the next online catalog demonstration presented in Japanese will take place in the main library sixth floor training room on June 20th from 1 to 3 p.m. For more information about multilingual public access catalog trainings, phone the International Center at 557-4430. And for patrons interested in the Internet, the Information Services Department of the Main Library will present Internet Basics with Mark Webb, an introduction to the Internet and how to use the Lynx and Netscape browsers. Internet Basics with Mark Webb will be presented in the Corette Auditorium at the Main Library on Thursday, May 22nd, and Thursday, June 19th, with both programs starting at 6.30 p.m. During May, the Library celebrates Asian Pacific Heritage Month with special programs for children, teens, and adults. Ethnotech presents their engaging children's show, Asian Treasure Bag featuring storytelling, music, and movement on Saturday, May 31st in the Main Library's Corette Auditorium at 2 p.m. On Tuesdays, May 6th and 13th, from 6 to 7.30 p.m., the Sunset Branch will be holding a Chinese calligraphy contest for 12 to 17-year-olds. Brushes, ink, and paper will be provided. There's a gift for the first place winner and the works of the first three winners will be displayed at the library. Also for teens aged 14 through 18 will be a Japanese silk screening workshop at the Chinatown Branch Library on Thursday, May 8th at 3.30 p.m. Sponsored by the Asian Week newspaper, this event is led by the Japanese Art and Media Workshop. Bring a blank, light-colored t-shirt. Writers from the Asian American Writers Workshop celebrate their new line of Asian American anthologies with a reading on Saturday, May 17th in the Main Library's Corette Auditorium at 1.30 p.m. Come hear readings by Chitra Divakaruni, Minal Hajratwala, Joel Tarakiel Tan, and Jamie Jacinto in this anthology debut. Join Gary Holloway at the Sunset Branch Library for a scenic slide tour of changing Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand at 7 p.m. on Monday, May 19th. Finally, Wooden Fish Songs, a concert reading, will be presented by Asian Week in cooperation with the library on Tuesday, May 20th at the Main Library at 6.30 p.m. 
and on Saturday, May 31st at 2.30 p.m. at the Chinatown branch. Three Bay Area actresses directed by Don McCunn narrate Ruth Ann Lum McCunn's story of Lu Gim Gong, the immigrant horticulturist who helped revolutionize the Florida citrus industry. So come help us celebrate Asian Pacific Heritage Month at the library during the month of May. Do you know where Camera Obscura is located? What's your favorite movie filmed in San Francisco? Can you name three books set in San Francisco neighborhoods? And what's the weirdest thing written on the bulletin board in your neighborhood laundromat? If you're curious about the answers to these questions, get involved in Streets of San Francisco, San Francisco Public Library's first summer reading program for teens. Designed as a giant scavenger hunt, Streets of San Francisco will suggest activities to enjoy and books to read, as well as offering lots of prizes, ranging from brand new books to free movie passes to gift certificates at restaurants. The program will run June 7th through July 19th, with a grand finale, complete with prizes and refreshments on July 25th in the Corred Auditorium at the main library. Streets of San Francisco will be offered at the following libraries. Bayview Anna E. Wadden, Fernal Heights, Excelsior, Glen Park, Portola, Sunset, Visitation Valley, and the main library at Civic Center. The program is offered to teens ages 14 through 18 or to anyone entering high school in the fall. There will be a kickoff for the Streets of San Francisco Teen Summer Reading Program at the Visitation Valley Branch on Friday, June 6 at 3.30 p.m. and at the Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch Library on Saturday, June 7 at 3 p.m. Streets of San Francisco is sponsored by Friends of the San Francisco Public Library and the Mayor's Office of Children, Youth, and Their Families. And now check out Ruth, a member of the San Francisco Public Library Teen Advisory Committee with this great book review. Hi, my name is Ruth. I'm reading The First Thievo by Arl Stein. It's one of three books. And the book is about uh, two sisters who are trying to get into a, their school cheerleading squad. And they're like really anxious to get on it. They finally get on it. They get on the team. And the captain of the team, she doesn't like them too. So uh, she tries to do anything to get rid of them. And she starts, the captain, she starts killing people. She starts killing some of the cheerleaders. And then eventually she's going to go after them. And then they they're doing so good and all, they're going to go to the to something called the All-City, like finals and stuff. So they make it there. And then on the way over there, the bus, they, had, they got into an accident. And the leader of the cheerleading squad, she flew out the bus and she, she died. She died on this cemetery. Like, she fell on this tomb. And then the tomb, it was like, it was somebody had died there a long time ago. And so she, she kind of, uh, she gets kind of like the soul of the tomb like that. And then she starts killing all these people. And then in school, she hears like uh, the sisters, they hear all these kinds of screams, lockers banging, all these kinds of weird stuff. And they're trying to wonder who it is because they don't, th they don't think it's her because she's dead already. So the book is pretty good. I liked it. And I'm going to start on the second one, this one right here. It's called The Second Evil, and uh, I think it's pretty good, and if you want to find out what happened, just read the book. That's it. For your information, the San Francisco Public Library Full Commission meets the first Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. The Finance, Operations, and Building Committee meets on the third Tuesday of the month at 4 p.m and the Planning and Policy Committee meets on the third Thursday of the month at 4.30 p.m. All Library Commission meetings are held in the Latino Hispanic Community Meeting Room on the lower level of the main library. Join the Literacy Campaign being organized by the San Francisco PTA. Drop off a new or used book to any San Francisco elementary school during the month of May. The books will be used by each school to create classroom libraries, to provide summer reading collections, and for special gifts for school children. 
So make some room on your shelves while making some kids happy. Give a book. And finally, the library system will be closed in observance of Memorial Day on Monday, May 26th. Branch programs for adults this month include, on Monday, May 12th, 7 p.m., a slide talk presentation about the Palace of Fine Arts by Palace Guide John Gall. Take a look at the history and lore of this San Francisco landmark created by architect Bernard Maybeck for the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition. On Wednesday, May 14th at 7 p.m., the Presidio branch will present Once Upon a Mother's Day, an author reading in celebration of mothers. Join Alfred Ghetto as he presents a dramatic reading of an original story. On Saturday, May 17th at 2 p.m., the Chinatown branch will present a slide presentation about the Canadian Rockies by San Francisco photographer Zhe Kuang Wang. Also on Saturday, May 17th at 4 p.m., the Potrero branch will present Shanghai in San Francisco. Author Bill Picklehaupt will talk about the practice of kidnapping sailors and forcing them to work on ships in 19th and early 20th century San Francisco. The discussion based on Picklehaupt's book will be accompanied by a slide presentation. And early next month on Saturday, June 7th at 2 p.m., the Chinatown branch will present a lecture and slides on the artistry of Chao Xiao An. Docent Doris Chun of the Asian Art Museum will discuss the paintings of Chao Xiao An, one of China's most renowned contemporary artists, whose works consist of intimate sketches of birds, plants, and insects. There's always lots in store at your neighborhood branch library. For a complete listing of programs and events for adults, check out the printed version of At the Public Library, published monthly by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, and available free at all branch libraries and the main library in Civic Center. In conjunction with the Goethe Institute and other participating organizations, the San Francisco Public Library will be presenting The Struggle Toward Sexual Liberation, 1897 to 1997, The Legacy of Magnus Hirschfeld. Hirschfeld founded the Scientific Humanitarian Committee on May 14, 1897, in Berlin. Considered the world's first organization dedicated to fighting the legal intolerance against homosexuality, its 10,000 volumes from Dr. Hirschfeld's incomparable library at the Institute for Sexual Science were among the first books to be burned by the Nazis. In commemoration of 100 years of the struggle toward sexual liberation, the library will display an exhibit of books and ephemera from the collection of Mel Gordon, documenting the life and times of Dr. Magnus Hirschfeld in the James C. Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center from May 14th through July 13th. A press conference marking the opening of the exhibit will be held in the main library's Corette Auditorium at 2 p.m. on May 14th. Plans for the event include San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown declaring May 15th the Magnus Hirschfeld Day. Also, as part of the citywide festival, the library is presenting a series of Sunday lectures in the main library's Corette Auditorium. David Beale kicks off the series with Jewish Berlin, the 1920s, and Sexology on May 25th at 2 p.m. On June 1st, Susan Stryker presents Magnus Hirschfeld and Transgender Identity at 1 p.m. Finally, Mel Gordon, Professor of Dramatic Arts at UC Berkeley, curator of the library's Hirschfeld exhibit, gives a talk on the legacy of Lost Berlin on June 8th at 1 p.m. The lecture series and the exhibit are free and open to the public. Also, watch for the June Thursday at Noon video series, which will feature 100 years towards sexual liberation in Germany, the legacy of Magnus Hirschfeld.
You gotta be cool on the inside too. Want to learn how to read? Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one-to-one -one tutoring for adult learners. Project Read's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557-4388. Here's this month's San Francisco Public Library news and notes. Last month, on April 18th, the new Maine completed its first year of operation. And what a year it was. Since opening day, the staff of the new Maine have welcomed 2,145,388 people. Checked out 1,591,411 books and materials. Presented 213 adult programs issued 62,011 library cards, hosted 235 events in public meeting rooms, held 158 programs for 7,805 kids, hosted 737 school visits for 17,313 students, and conducted 840 guided tours for 5,880 patrons. Tours of the new Maine are conducted Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. and on Saturdays and Sundays at 2.30 p.m. The tours start in the first floor atrium and are limited to 17 persons per tour. Tickets for tours are available the day of the tour at the first floor information desk. For more information, phone 557-4280. On the 1st of May, the mural Tal vez Mejores Voces, Perhaps Better Voices, was installed in the New Main Library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room. The mural by Guatemalan artist Emmanuel Paniagua is a homage to Latin American culture and its rich literary heritage. Commissioned by Dr. Carlotta del Portillo, coordinator of the Latino-Hispanic Affinity Group of the Library Foundation, Paniagua's vibrant and colorful work contains two main elements. The central figure, an allegorical representation of the Latin American writer, and the surrounding images, inspired by the writings of various Latin writers and a pre-Hispanic story from the indigenous Maya Quiche people. Across the top of the painting, there is inscribed a phrase that synthesizes a universal message of Latin American literature from the book Pedro Paramo by Juan Rulfo. There is air and sun. There are clouds up above a blue sky. And behind it, maybe there are songs, maybe better voices. In summary, there is hope. The Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room located on the lower level of the New Main is a gift of the Latino-Hispanic Community of San Francisco to every user of the library. The multi-purpose room is used for library programs, community meetings, and other public events. And finally, the Noe Valley Sally Brun Memorial Branch Library will host a community event, 24th Street Then and Now, a celebration of Noe Valley history on Sunday, June 8th from 2 to 5 p.m. The celebration will feature the Singing Rainbow Youth Ensemble and music with Bruce Sherman. And that's at the Public Library News and Notes for now. The main library's Jewett Gallery is showing Neighbors and Neighborhoods, Building Affordable Housing Together, from May 12th through June 12th. The exhibit showcases local efforts to address San Francisco's housing crisis, 
and to preserve the economic and cultural vitality of the city through affordable housing development. This exhibit is being sponsored by a team including the Mayor, the Office of Housing, the Council of Community Housing, the Art Commission, the Library, and others. In addition, you can meet your community builders at the affordable housing forums being held Tuesday, May 27th and Tuesday, June 3rd from 6 to 7.45 p.m. in the main library's Corette Auditorium. Each forum includes a slide presentation featuring affordable housing architect Tom Jones and a panel discussion by local housing providers on new developments in San Francisco's affordable housing efforts. So check out Neighbors and Neighborhoods, a San Francisco affordable housing exhibit in the main library's lower level gallery through June 12th. Beast sees how lonely and how sad Belle is, and he wants to make her life in the castle happier. I want to do something for her. Suddenly, Beast realizes just what will please Belle most of all. I've never seen so many books in all my life. You like it? It's wonderful. Then it's yours. It can be yours, too. Open the door to wonder. Get your library card. Can I get my library card, too? The month of May brings a multitude of spring flowers and colorful kites scratching across the blue sky. And May also brings great children's programs to the San Francisco Public Library. It's bubble mania for all ages with bubble man Louis Peral at the Anza Branch on Wednesday, May 14th at 7.15 p.m. On Thursday, May 15th, the Bayview Wadden Branch and the Ocean View Branch welcome children to after-school crafts programs. The fun begins at 4 p.m. at the Bayview Branch and 3.30 at the Ocean View Branch. The Merced Branch presents after-school stories and crafts for ages 6 and older Friday, May 23rd, and Friday, May 30th at 4 p.m. Come and celebrate children's art with young audiences at the Main Library's Children's Center, 1 to 4 p.m. on Saturday, May 17th. Activities include face painting, hands-on art, computer art, and an awards ceremony. Also, special performances by storyteller Yolanda Rhodes and much more. Two branch libraries will be presenting magic shows this month. First on Saturday, May 17th at 3 p.m., the Ingleside branch will present a performance by the Magic Makers. And the North Beach branch will present a magic show with Magic Dan on Thursday, May 22nd at 3.45 p.m. And on Wednesday, May 28th, join Jimbo the Clown for a special family night program at the Parkside branch starting at 7 p.m. There's lots more in store for kids this month at the San Francisco Public Library. For a complete listing of all children's programs, pick up a copy of the print version of At the Public Library, published monthly by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, and available at all neighborhood branch libraries. The Main Library's Thursday at Noon video series features wet adventures during the month of May. The lineup includes May 1st, Epic Voyages of History, The Brendan Voyage. May 8th, Lost Man River, an Everglades adventure. May 15th, The Giant Nile, the Wild River. May 22nd, Around Cape Horn and Amazonia. And to close out the series on May 29th, Rafting the Grand Canyon. Here's a sneak preview of it now. The water of the Little Colorado is usually a vivid turquoise, the result of high concentrations of calcium carbonate. It's a stark contrast as it merges slowly with the Colorado, then slides into the muddy brown highway to the Grand Canyon. Just below the confluence, each raft is a tiny speck in a classic Grand Canyon scene. There's a sea of billowing clouds above. The arcs of sunlight that break through cast deep shadows in the canyon's crevasses.
An hour later, the group pulls into camp just ahead of a gorgeous sunset. Tomorrow, everything will change. Up ahead, there's a big rabbit. The kind Powell was listening for. The kind he feared. Sockdolager. The name is 19th century slang for knockout blow. Now, eight rubber rafts have to go the distance with foaming Colorado Fury. At Sock Dollinger, the expedition stops so the guides can plan their runs. You can't remember what to do if you fall in the drink? Ask your guide for a refresher for it. Things could happen today. Things could happen. Oars could break. Equipment could come loose. Big holes in the river could trap the boat. The water will be cold. <laughs> Frederick Dillenbaugh, an artist with Powell's second expedition, writes vividly of this rapid. Nearer and nearer came the angry tumult. The major shouted, backwater! There was a sudden dropping away of all support, and then the mighty waves smote us. The boat rose to them well, but we were flying at 25 miles an hour, and at every leap, the breakers rolled over us. Bail, shouted the major. Bail for your lives! And we dropped the oars to bail, though bailing was almost useless. Lunch is a welcome rest, a time to consider that after conquering a major rapid, this group of adventurers is now part of Grand Canyon history. If that clip whet your appetite, the library has all kinds of books about the subjects touched on in these videos, too. Here are just a few you might be interested in. Running the Amazon, a first-hand account of the only expedition ever to travel the entire 4,200-mile Amazon River from its source high in the Andes to its union with the Atlantic Ocean. One in our Endangered Planet series, Rivers and Lakes, explains the way rivers and lakes work together and how we've harmed them at a level children can understand. That dark and bloody river chronicles the history of the Ohio River. And finally, Follow the Water from Brook to Ocean is a great Let's Read and Find Out science book. So happy wet adventures this summer. Thanks for watching at the Public Library here on CityWatch Cable Channel 54. You can catch at the Public Library Monday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Friday evenings from 8 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 noon to 1 p.m. See you next time.